Hey there, ever had trouble finding your keyhole in the dark? Well, I've got something that's gonna brighten up your doorstep quite literally. Picture this, a DIY project using ESP32 microcontroller that will illuminate your doorstep and keyhole, making late night fumbles a thing of past. Stick around till the end of this video to discover how easy it is to brighten up your keyhole. So are you ready to shed some light on your doorstep? Let's dive in. Basic idea behind this entire project is to have a device stuck on the front door. As soon as a guest approaches the door, it should light up with an animation showing that this is the keyhole or you're approaching near to the door. As soon as you walk even closer to the door, it should light up in a constant white light so that it could light up the entire keyhole. This device is supposed to be portable, so we'll have to add some deep sleep features in it so that it can sustain for a longer duration on battery. Let's talk about the choice of components. I'm using ESP32 microcontrollers. Yeah, this one's. Why? Because I wanted to add DLE supporting feature as well as over the air updates, which is not possible with something else, you know, like an AD Tiny. But yeah, it's definitely an overkill. So other than that, I'm using ultrasonic sensor. Yeah, this one, HC SR04. Why? Because most of you guys might have the same thing and it's easier to replicate as well as to program the thing. For the LEDs, I'm using NeoPixel LEDs, more commonly known as WS2812B. I, again, because there are a lot of libraries already available on GitHub as well as the entire internet. Uh, one which we are going to use is called as Fast LED. And uh, I don't have to worry about writing the drivers from scratch. So that's the best choice I can do. For the power, I'm going to use a lithium ion 18650 battery in combination with a TP4056, which is a charge control IC. Again, this is something that I already had, so I'm using it. There's no specific reason. You can use lithium ion batteries, small ones, big ones, whatever you like. So yeah, that's all for the choice of material. Once we have decided our components and choice of material is done, it's time to make our own PCB. For the PCB, I've decided to use Easy EDA, which is an online free software. You guys can use the same software if you like, or if you want to use something else, you're free to use that. This is my schematic. It has the power supply thing, basically power regulator part. Then I have added some filter capacitors, or uh, LED for Wi-Fi, which is basically for future use. Then we have a button for Wi-Fi setup, which is again for future use. And there is a programming pins. Here is a microcontroller. And here are our WS2812B LEDs, which is basically NeoPixels. Here is where we'll get the battery input from or the power. And I have added some female connectors for ultrasonic sensor. So this is my PCB design. And here's how it will look once it is done. I have placed all the NeoPixels and the interfacing parts on the bottom side. Special thanks to Next PCB. They helped me procure all the PCBs and the components. Do check them out guys. The prices are not that high. It's quite reliable. Let's see how much they charge you. It's basically like $2 for 5 pieces or something. Which is pretty good if you ask me. And the shipping cost would be like 20 bucks for United States. Or if you want to go cheaper, you can use one of those options. And you'll be getting five pieces of PCB in like $8, which is a very good deal if you ask me. Once you receive your PCB, it's time to solder. After we are done soldering, it's a very, very, very good idea to start testing our hardware. So I've written an in-circuit testing program which can test the Wi-Fi LEDs, setup button, distance sensor, the NeoPixels, etc. Let's see how it works in action. As soon as you open up the serial monitor, it will show you all the options, whatever you want to test. Let's say if you wanted to test the Wi-Fi LED, you just press 1 and press Enter. And then... If you wanted to test like the setup button, you press 2 and if you press the setup button, it will show up here. 
let's say if you wanted to test the ultrasonic sensor it will do that as well let's say if i want to test the rgb led i just press 4 and it's powered up the led talking about the firmware i have the basic definitions done here all of that basic stuff and let's talk about my main loop here i have set a condition if the ultrasonic distance is between 70 and 30 it will just do an animation and to make that animation, I used this website called as Fast LED Animator. When you go to the editor option and uh, you just have to select number of LEDs, frame, frame per second. Just go in frame by frame and paint in whatever pixels you want to show. Then you go to upload option, choose your LED, choose your chip type and brightness level. And then this pin doesn't matter because you can change it here. And then you just copy paste this code and you will have a animation for yourself. So when you go back to your firmware, here I have a condition for the distances between 30 and 2. You will just show a white LED and then go to deep sleep. This is just for power saving. You can go through my code. It's linked in the description. So yeah, that's pretty much it about my code part. Let's talk about the Fusion 360 or you can say the CAD model. So this is how my design looks like and this is a two-part system. It has the top plate and it also has a battery holder. The battery holder is basically like a clip and here is the slot for charging unit and we have some holes for the LEDs as well as the reset button and our Wi-Fi LED. Once our soldering and 3D printing is done, we have most of the stuff that we need. We can proceed forward towards assembling everything. Once the assembly is done, I'll be using command strips to put this entire unit on my door and here is our DIY solution in action so guys that's all for this video I hope you learned something and enjoyed watching this video if you like this video give it a like share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to mission critical until the next one goodbye